What's up, Niner Faithful? Johnny Dell back once again with another episode of 49ers Playbook, the channel that's trying to answer the whys and hows of the game. We're going to continue our weekly review looking back at week three against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And in this episode, we're going to try and take a look at how it was that we were able to contain Pittsburgh's passing offense. I know they had a backup quarterback in, but there was also a lot of things that our defense did very well in this game to help us contain the passing game. It wasn't all on Mason Rudolph. You know, he had a rough game, uh, and by that I mean he had a tough task going against our defense. Sometimes you you look at it as equal parts. Our defense playing well, their offense playing poorly, but this was really more about our defense playing very well throughout most of the game. So let's jump in and take a look at how we did this. So one thing I'll talk about is that we played more man coverage in this game than I'd seen us play in a little while. Definitely more than the past couple weeks. And on this play, we're just going to be in man coverage, and they're going to come out in 21 personnel. You have a tight end here, a tight end here. And we're just going to be in man coverage. We're going to have uh, our linebacker here on the other tight end. Jaquaski Tart's going to be on Vance McDonald. Richard Sherman's got the inside receiver, and Akella Witherspoon has the outside receiver. What... Pittsburgh's going to try and do here is they're going to try and run a little wide receiver screen. So they're just going to have, this is Smith Schuster right here. He's going to end up just taking a step back and they're going to try and bring Vance McDonald out on a block. First to set this up, they're going to end up bringing their running back, Connor, on a play fake. The idea here is that they want to get Jaquaski Tart right here to bite on the cheese to bite on this play fake and get himself out of the play. That way they can bring Vance McDonald out and they're going to have a two-on-one blocking situation where they can get a blocker on Sherman and then bring Vance McDonald around to block on Witherspoon. This way they're able to get a lane and get up the field. So we'll clear all that off. And here, let's see how we play this play. So here's the snap and you're gonna see the play fake to Connor. The one thing I want to highlight here is that Jaquaski Tart does a really good job of keeping his eyes on Vance McDonald. He doesn't bite on any of the cheese, and he's able to then stay with his man in man coverage, doesn't bite on the cheese, and therefore bring a, another defender over into the running lane. And so let's keep moving on this, on this play. And so as you see here, Vance McDonald, instead of he was trying to get around over onto Witherspoon because he can't, now he's got it that Tart's taking him on. That leaves Witherspoon on a free line to the ball carrier. And here Witherspoon does a great job of attacking the ball carrier and stopping him behind the line of scrimmage. While Witherspoon gets props on this play, and he should, this is a play that is really set up by the good play of Jaquaski Tart and not biting on the run fake. He could have very easily bit on that run fake, left his man, and ended up allowing the def the offense to do what they were trying to do. You can see on this play that Vance McDonald is trying to get out on Witherspoon. That's his assignment, but he's not able to get there because Jaquaski Tart holds him up. So this is a, an example of a player who his, his name is not going to show up in the stat sheet on this play, but he's a prime reason why this play was stuffed. So we'll keep it rolling, jump to the next play here. This was a key third down in the game, and so we'll just look at exactly how this play turned out the way it did. We'll back it up here and take a second just to draw this play out and see. So first I'll talk about what Pittsburgh was trying to do on offense. They're going to have two different concepts going here. They're going to have one, which is a stick concept, which involves quick out or speed out from your outside receiver and then an option route from your tight end. This would be a tight end stick and what this tight end is supposed to do is if he reads zone he's going to sit down. If he reads man he will continue on towards the sideline. And then on the other side of the field they're going to run a China concept. This is a concept that we run pretty frequently uh, especially if you've seen any of my older videos. We run this quite a bit. So that's what they're going to run. And on our side, we're going to run a zone. I believe this is a cover two zone that we're going to end up doing with a blitz. So there, it's actually going to be four underneath and two deep. And so this, the, the, the play that Pittsburgh has should win because we're actually coming with this blitz and 
So what we're going to do is we're going to bring these two guys off this side of the line, and we're actually going to back out D Ford and Ronald Blair. I know that Salah has taken some hit over the years for dropping defensive linemen into coverage, but sometimes you do this to manufacture a blitz because by doing this, the, the offensive line, they have two players on one side of the line that are backing out. So that essentially occupies two blockers on that side of the line. So now you have three blockers against four rushers, and they're even going to bring um, bring the running back over. And by having three rushers on this side at the snap, that's actually also going to occupy the center. So now you've actually created a, a favorable mashup of four on three. This is what we would consider an overload blitz, where you're overloading one side where they cannot block everybody. So that's going to force the quarterback into a quick throw. The idea with these defensive linemen dropping is that they're just trying to take away any quick slants that are coming in. And so this play is really going to be up to Mason Rudolph to make a correct read. So we'll clear everything out and watch this play unfold. So here's the snap. You see that we're coming with an overload blitz on this side. They don't have enough blockers. Mason Rudolph sees this, and he immediately is going to look for the slant. That's actually the incorrect side he should be looking for because, like I talked about with the Jimmy Garoppolo video, quarterbacks want to throw into the blitz because by choosing this side of the field, he ends up choosing the side that's better covered versus the one that's open. So as you see, as this play drops, we end up having good bracketed coverage on the China concept here. Witherspoon's going to squeeze the route to begin with. They have to get to the 30-yard line to get a first down. And Ronald Blair is taking away the short route from the receiver. Also, we have a safety over the top, so he doesn't have an over-the-top throw. Witherspoon's going to do a good job of once this play gets, gets going a little bit, we'll kind of fast-forward it to that spot right here. As he sees this receiver breaking out, he's going to drop on him, bracket that coverage, and that's going to leave this slant open, but he's going to feel the presence of Ronald Blair over the middle. The What, what Mason Rudolph didn't see was on the other side where the stick concept was is that he had two receivers open. This receiver now, he's got to flip his hips and throw, so Sherman's probably going to get there, but he has Vance McDonald open because he's got so much room over D Ford. If he just throws it here to Vance McDonald, he can turn up field and gain a first down. But this is a situation where because of the pressure that's coming this way from our manufactured blitz, that he can't react in time, ends up choosing the wrong, play, wrong throw, and his receiver's sitting down because he sees the presence Rudolph doesn't see it, and he's leading him too much into this defender. Because if the, even if, if this defender runs through or the receiver runs through and catches the ball, he's going to get his head taken off by a big lineman. So this is again where manufactured pressure, as you see the the free blitzer coming across, is able to speed up a quarterback and make him make wrong decisions. I'm not blaming Mason Rudolph here. I'm crediting our defense again against some of the elite. QBs in the league, like an Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, they're going to make this correct read. But, you know, this is put this is putting a lot of pressure on a young guy. And this is a good way to do that by manufacturing pressure and force him to make a good, accurate read very quickly. So we'll keep moving right along here, talk about this next play. I really like this play because this was the first play that the Pittsburgh had deep in our red zone after the second Jimmy Garoppolo interception. They're going to take a shot at the end zone right at the start. So let's talk about this play and just see how this play turned out. So we're actually going to come out in a combo coverage here. We run a, a coverage every once in a while called Cover 3 Mabel. This is going to be very similar to that, but we're actually going to come with a blitz on this time. So it's kind of a mix of a fire zone and cover three Mabel. What Mabel stands for is man. It's in just an M word to stand for man. And what you end up having is like a cover three, normal cover three, but you play with man coverage on the single receiver side. And because they end up having two tight ends on this side, they're going to end up playing zone over here and man coverage on this side. Now it is a little, a little uncommon for us to play this coverage when, when there's another receiver over here, but this is kind of how it how it ends up turning out is that we have Witherspoon in man coverage and everybody else is going to be in a zone. We're going to drop here. We're going to drop this direction, this direction. Sherman's going to be here and our free safety. And then we're going to bring this linebacker on a blitz. 
So this will end up setting up a five-man rush with a six-man coverage. And then what Pittsburgh's going to do is that they're going to come out and they're going to run a double post concept here. This receiver, because it's going to be a cover three, is going to run more of a skinny post. But the double post, again, a horizontal stretch of your free safety. And they're going to mix that with a sucker concept. So Vance McDonald's going to come over and hook over the middle again. The idea is that he's going to suck up an underneath defender and open up the intermediate zone. So let's just watch how we, we attack this play. So here from the snap, we're going to see as Mason Rudolph drops back, his eyes are on the free safety. Again, remember, the double post concept is a horizontal stretch of the free safety because he sees him shaded over on to this direction. I'm oh, sorry, that was supposed to be an arrow. For some reason, it's not making it do an arrow. There we go. Um, because he sees him shaded to this direction, what he's going to do is look for the second post. Again, the horizontal stretch of the free safety and so from there Rudolph is going to turn and look down to this side of the field he's looking to read the the hook curl defender and who has been occupied by the inside post and at that point he's going to try and get the ball in between the corner and the safety the difference here is that Kwan Williams does a good job of letting this receiver go because he's about to match drop down and match the crosser that's coming coming under and he's going to be just enough in the in the lane and then from the very beginning of this play if we go back and watch um Akella Witherspoon does a good job of getting into his receiver here and disrupting his timing he really did not do a good job of this last year he was really hesitant to jam guys at the line of scrimmage and here he's able to it disrupts the timing just a little bit Rudolph ex is expecting this this receiver to be a little bit more vertical by this point He's not, and, he's, and he ends up really tightening the window and causing an incomplete pass. That's a really good job of everybody around on the defense because Pittsburgh actually does a pretty good job of picking up the blitz. If you look at the blitz here, they picked it up. There's no real pressure on Rudolph. It's just tight coverage. So, you know, this, is a, this was a game where there was moments where our pass rush really determined how effective we were in defending plays but then there was also moments when our coverage was just really good if you look at this play by this point he really doesn't have anywhere to go we've covered everything pretty well and he's just got to make a tight throw into a small window and our defenders are just playing a good job you know witherspoon as for as much flack as he took last year has played a very good well we'll keep moving right along here we're going to look at third down on this drive and I really like how we play this from top to bottom this is gonna this is gonna take a little bit to kinda look at we play a variation on a coverage but we end up getting really more of a coverage play here and some good pressure so let's look at this play for a second so first we'll talk about the defense we're gonna be in we're I believe we're in a man coverage here with two safety help it's not gonna be your traditional two uh, cover two man where you have deep safety help our safeties are end up gonna end up taking a shallow drop here and they're gonna let the outside guys cover anything deep and then we're in a pattern match release here which how this works is it's not necessarily this guy is gonna be on this guy it's this guy is gonna be responsible for any uh, in, t in in between release the linebacker or safety on this side is gonna be responsible for any release inside the corner is going to be responsible for any release outside and then this player will pick up anybody in the middle and again the, the what I love is our guys do a good job here of knowing where their help is these safeties they're not going to be playing an over the top help and I'll, I'll show that in a second because this receiver on this side is going to end up giving an outside release Moore is going to see that and he's going to bail on on help here so he's just going to let Sherman take it if on any vertical release so these corners are going to be responsible for anything deep to the outside. This is, this is setting up a positive uh, matchup for us on defense. So then now let's talk about what the offense was going to do on this play. So we'll clear the screen here and show you what Pittsburgh wanted to do. They're going to run a verticals concept here. So what this is going to be is that they're just going to run four, to, four verticals here, um, which is, like it sounds, four vertical routes. And... If I can get my, 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 my drawing here to cooperate. And the idea here is 
they're going to horizontally stretch the deep area of the field. One thing we like to do a lot of times is we'll play a cover two zone. So this is a good call against what we normally run. They're they are calling something to defeat our normal defense because, again, now you're going to have four routes on the deep portion of the field where you would normally only have two zone defenders. So, again, four on two, that's a good matchup. And, and really the the – side of the field they're going to look to would be the three because then you have three on one or even two but we're going to end up playing this very very well and we'll, we'll kind of watch that as it goes so we'll jump back into our play here you see first they try and run play action to suck everybody up and this is where we see man coverage is our linebacker here he is in man coverage on the running back so he's just going to follow him we see we've got man coverage here again he's going to pick up the inside release of of the receiver and here we have K1 and Akello are looking for who's going out who's going in he sees that the tight end is in the receiver is breaking outside so they've matched up to their proper routes and they're gonna have them covered on this side what we'll, you'll see on the, the other side is over here uh, this is more he's gonna be looking this direction and see an outside release from the receiver and so therefore he's just gonna drop that route and look to help on anything over the middle. This is how we, we see what defense it is here. You can see he's taking his eyes off over there. He, see, he saw out so release. He said, that's Sherman's guy. He's got it. And so now he's going to turn his eyes back in to look to help anything there. And this is where it's really good team defense because here you have the linebacker taking, that's a linebacker on a receiver. So that's not always a favorable matchup, you know, athletic, athleticism wise. And, but he knows he's got help over the top. And here our other safety, he's going to see you know, he's breaking inside and he's going to trust that the other safety is going to pick that up, which he does because now he's looking this way and is able to pick up and help the Mike backer on man coverage. We've now that allows us to double team the second uh, middle vertical route and Witherspoon is on top of his guy for the other vertical route. And really, we've taken everything away at this point. So as, as we continue on through the play, now we've bracketed a receiver here. This receiver's covered, and we've bracketed this receiver. Sherm's over the top. There's nowhere for Mason Rudolph to go. You know, and, and the pocket starts breaking down, and he's got to try and escape. And he does get, get a yard on it, but it's third down, so he doesn't end up really picking up anything worth of any consequence. So here's, here's again, the marriage of good coverage, good team coverage, and a decent pass rush. So now let's say let's look at the pass rush and we'll look at, I want to highlight Nick Bosa on this play. This is the same play, this is just from the end zone view and you're going to see Nick Bosa's right here. Watch what he does, he's going to come inside and take on Pittsburgh's left tackle. And Pittsburgh's got a good left tackle, he's not a guy who's, you know, this is his first time in uh, start in the league. He's a two-time pro bowler I believe and so watch what Nick Bosa does here off the line He's got play action to his side. He's going to get underneath this left tackle's pads, a perfect placement, and drive him back, put him on skates, and actually blow him up into, because they're trying to sell this play this play action, so they're bringing this guard and pulling him over to kick out. Uh, so that tries to help sell their run fake, and he's going to blow up the left tackle into the pulling guard and the running back and blow them all up. And that's what ends up blowing up the pocket here. What's amazing about this play is he takes this guy on, blows everything up, and now he's taking on three blockers himself. So now that leaves you with three one-on-ones on the uh, for the rest of the guys. And at that point, Rudolph, you know, he did, he did a good job trying to hang in here and look for something that's open. But when you have these many guys on one-on-ones, it kind of gets crazy. And so he's just got to try and get out of there, and that's what helps everything happen. Uh, he only gets one yard, excuse me. So here's a great example of Nick Bosa and the impact he puts on there. I mean, the guy is leading the league in in quarterback pressures, and this is why. I mean, because he can he can look at him just dominate the defensive line or offensive line. And these aren't bad offensive line players. You know, he's he's doing this as a rookie on a bad on a not hundred percent wheel. So that's pretty good. Well, thanks for tuning in. Again, as always, you can support me on Patreon. You can interact with me in the comments section on Reddit at 49erswebzone.com. I sure appreciate you guys taking time to look through the video. And as always, go Niners!